pre-election setup. Administering the oath. On the back of the informational pamphlet found in the general form zipper bag, the commissioner in charge administers the oath on election day to all commissioners and takes the oath themselves prior to the opening of the polls on election day. Safety check of the polling place. Safety hazards and barriers to voters must be secured and removed. Check your voting area for objects that might cause a mobility hazard. Look for electrical cords, clutter, unsecured mats or rugs, locked doors, and any other barriers. If temporary accessibility equipment is being used, such as ramps, temporary signs, cones, or mats, make sure they're in place. Call the clerk's office immediately if you're missing any temporary accessibility equipment. Machine setup. Position the voting machines, lock the wheels, plug in the first machine, and daisy chain the others together. Look for the yellow AC power light to confirm power is working on the voting machines. Check for any physical damage to the machines. If you observe any physical damage, make a notation on the machine certificate, and if service is needed due to damage, call the clerk of court or the voting machine warehouse technician immediately. Attach the operator panel by hanging it on the exterior of the voting machine. Retrieve the audio bag and connect the audio unit to the back of the supply or lead voting machine. Locate the red knob to power on the voting machine by turning the knob to the on position. Wait for the voting machine to completely power up. Look at the operator panel. It should read, ready to open polls election. If you get any error message, it is important to call the clerk's office or speak to a machine technician to report the error and get instructions before proceeding. Opening the polls. Open the polls on every voting machine. To open the polls, insert the silver key into the polls open polls close slot and turn the key to the open position. You'll hear an electronic sound. <coughs> remove the key immediately. It is important to remove the silver key so that you do not turn the key to the closed position before the end of voting at 8 p.m. Should you close the polls before 8 p.m., this machine can no longer be used. If this happens, call the clerk immediately. The zero proof report and closing the back of the machine. After opening the polls, one copy of the official election zero proof report will automatically begin printing. If the clerk of court requires more than one copy, you must print these now by pressing the print more button. Remove the zero proof report and review to verify that the time and the serial number of the voting machine are correct. Compare the protective counter to the number on the lower left-hand corner of the operator panel screen. Make sure the public counter is zero. Verify the ward and precinct are correct and verify that all candidate and proposition counters are zero. You can now close the back of the machine. Thread the operator panel cord through the groove in the back door, close, and lock the door with the yellow capped key. Raising front panel, completing B2 key envelope. Move to the front of the voting machine and pull the voter panel up in a vertical position. It won't drop or fall. This is the position to use for voters who need to be seated while voting. Now move to the back of the voting machine and pull the maroon latch and tilt the voter panel until it is resting on the back of the voting unit. Move to the front of the voting machine again to unlock the front panel using the yellow capped key. Unfold the doors. Carefully raise the top white panel with one hand and move a side door into place, joining it with the bracket on the inside top of the door, then joining the second door. Remove the curtains from the tube by pushing the release button on the tube above the wheels. Unroll the curtains and open the frame into a U shape. Gently push the arms of the curtain frame through the open knobs on the inside of the front doors. Check that the ballot information is all correct. To do this, make sure the ballot information on the zero proof report matches the ballot information on the machine face and that it matches the ballot information on the sample ballot found in the precinct specific envelope. If any ballot information is not correct, call the clerk's office. If all is correct, fill in the date on the zero report and have all commissioners sign the report before posting it at the entrance to the polling place.
You may find the Braille book and a full page magnifier located on the inside front door of the supply or lead machine or in the green canvas bag for anyone's use to be able to magnify the ballot on the voting machine. Place voting machine keys in the B2 key envelope and seal. All commissioners sign the key envelope and it remains sealed until voting is complete or if the keys are needed to service a voting machine. All service information must be documented on the back of the envelope. Putting out the Vote Here A-frame signs. All polling places will have at least one A-frame Vote Here sign. They are to be placed outside the polling place in the morning where voters can see them from the road while driving on Election Day. After the polls are closed, they must be picked up and placed next to the voting machines. Posting all reports and informational posters. Post the signage from your supply pack at the entrance to the polling place using the white stickers included in your supplies. This includes the election date and hours poster. Prior to posting, fill in the correct date and polling hours. Also post the Notice to Voters Picture ID poster, the sample ballot, and if applicable, the Statement of Constitutional Amendments. You also have an accessible entrance sign that may need directional arrows added to show voters with disabilities where to enter the polling place. Also post the Louisiana Voters Bill of Rights and Voting Information poster. This poster contains voting information such as voter registration, how to use the voting machine, election offenses, and who to contact to report fraud, etc. On occasion, commissioners may need to post a notice of candidate withdrawal or disqualification form, but only if instructed to do so by the clerk of court. The supplies also contain a red stop sign. Commissioners post the stop sign outside the polling place entrance to remind voters that no political activity is allowed. Electioneering. Electioneering or political materials are not allowed within 600 feet of the entrance to the polling place. If there are any political signs within this perimeter, call the clerk's office. They should be removed unless the signs are on private property. This also includes voter political materials such as shirts, caps, buttons, cards, etc. that promote a candidate or issue. They are not allowed. A voter can go to the restroom and turn their campaign shirt inside out. Remember, commissioners may not make comments about candidates, propositions, or constitutional amendments. Commissioners have the power to ask any person who is electioneering or disturbing voting within 600 feet of the polling location to leave the premises. If they do not follow a commissioner's order, call law enforcement. Voter registration forms. For the sign-in table, commissioners are required by law to have voter registration applications available next to the precinct register. Voters may use an application to register to vote or update their voter registration information, such as name misspelling, party affiliation, residence, mailing address, birthday, change in assistance to voting, etc. Notation of Irregularities Form the notation of irregularities form can be found in the precinct specific envelope. Remember that this form is used by you to document all issues that can occur with the polling place, voting machines, supplies, commissioners, emergencies, voters, public counts, watchers, or any other incidents or issues. Completing Section 1 of the Machine Certificate. Before voting begins, complete the first part of the machine certificate. Write the time the keys were received, the serial number of each voting machine, the seal number of each blue results cartridge, the numbers shown for the public counter and the protective counter of each machine, and list any visible damage to any voting machine. Indicate that you compared the ballot information on the zero proof report, the sample ballot, and machine face ballot, and that they match. Last, record the seal number that was delivered on the precinct register book. Verifying the blue precinct register seal. Before voting begins, verify you have a blue seal in the precinct register book to reseal the book after the polls close. If a blue seal is broken or missing, call the clerk to have it replaced before the end of the night. Precinct register book sections. 
The precinct register books are divided into five sections. The first section contains a list of the registered voters who are eligible to vote in this precinct for this election. There are several columns on this page that contain voter information as it pertains to this election. Voter number is the voter's unique registration number. Name of voter is listed with the last name first. Signature line is where the voter signs their name after the commissioner has verified the voter's eligibility. A voter cannot vote if the signature line is already signed by the voter or if voted by mail or voted early has been printed or stamped on the signature line. If address confirmation required is printed here, a voter must complete an address confirmation card before voting. Commissioner initials. Once a voter has been verified, the commissioner will initial here. If ROV is already printed, then the voter has voted by mail or voted early. If voters sign the precinct register books during early voting, it will contain initials by the registrar's staff. Barcode. It is important that nothing is written or marked on the barcode, otherwise it will not scan for the registrar. Address, date of birth, and mother's maiden name. This column is used for identification purposes. Lockout districts. This column will either be blank or contain a button number. If blank, all voters in the precinct get the same ballot to vote. If there is a button number, this is the number that the commissioner will select and activate on the operator panel, Assistant. Assistance to voter column indicates if the voter is eligible to receive assistance. It will either be blank or have a Y for yes in it. Party. This is the column showing the voter's registration choice for their political party. Supplemental tab. The precinct register contains tabs for specific information. The supplemental tab is where you put supplemental precinct register pages that are delivered election morning by the clerk's office before voting begins and will arrive in the list or supplemental list envelope. These pages are used to find voters when they are not in the original pages of the precinct register. Also in this envelope, you may find a list of persons that voted absentee by mail. Always work the supplemental list of persons that voted absentee by mail by finding the voter's name in the precinct register and writing voted by mail on their signature line and initialing so that if they come into the precinct to vote, you will know that they have already voted. You may also receive a call from the registrar to mark voted by mail on a voter's signature line if a ballot is received by the registrar from a military person or overseas citizen on election day. If you do not receive the list or supplemental envelope and need to know if a person is authorized to vote, call the registrar or the Secretary of State's office for assistance. Remember to check these supplemental precinct register pages if you do not find a voter's name in the original precinct register. Precinct Register Correction Affidavit tab. The Precinct Register Correction Affidavit tab contains blank precinct register pages for commissioners to print a voter's name and have them sign when using a precinct register correction form. This form is only used when a voter's name is not found in the precinct register or the supplemental precinct register and an election official authorizes the voter to vote. If a voter wishes to make changes, such as misspelling, incorrect birthday, address, mother's maiden name, political party, etc., they can do so by completing a new registration form. If there is a lockout, the Registrar of Voters or Secretary of State's office will give you the correct button number to press on the operator panel. Assistance to Voter tab. This tab is used when a voter is in need of assistance. If there is a Y for yes in the assistance column in the original precinct register page, you must print the voter's name, assistance name, and have the assistant sign. If there is no Y in the assistance column and you determine they are authorized to have assistance because they are unable to read or have a physical disability with supporting documentation, you must also check the box in the first column. Provisional Voters tab. This tab is only used during federal elections when a person votes a provisional ballot. The commissioner prints the voter's name on the precinct register pages behind the provisional voters tab. The voter signs next to their name, prints their address, and the commissioner initials.